This video will demonstrate the multivariate group of analyses. These are used to analyze multiple continuous traits and present them graphically. I'll start by selecting the means heat map option. Then let's select studies. I'll pick this one. Here we have several factors that describe, for example, the variety name, sometimes referred to as line or germplasm, and field code, and then we have some other factors. Then there are many traits that were measured on these varieties. To analyze all traits per variety, I put the variety name into the X field, and then I'll take traits into the Y field. I can choose any subset of traits or I can take all of them like this and click on the Y field button. Unlike the univariate analysis where each trait in the Y field results in a separate figure, in the multivariate result tab we'll have one figure with all traits in it and we can click OK to see the results and this is the resulting figure. All traits that we put in the Y field appear on the bottom. On the right we can see the names of the varieties which are the levels of the factor that we put in the X field. Each color square represents the mean of the corresponding variety and trait. The color scale ranges from green which is low value, to black, which is average, and then red, that represents high value. Gray squares indicate missing values. You can point the mouse at each square to view the corresponding genotype, name, and trait. For instance, here we can see that this variety has a high value for this corresponding trait. Also, varieties are clustered according to their traits profile, so those that have a similar profile appear adjacent to each other. A click on this button will display the heat map as a dynamic figure that can be zoomed in and out using the Java Tree View application. I click on the row in the figure We'll put those varieties into the table below. Then we can click on the Go button to move the selected lines into the list page. Here they can be saved as a new list or moved into an existing one. This way we can select lines based on their visual traits profile. Another useful option is to compare all varieties against a common control. For this we go back to the Form tab and then we open the Normalize window. We select the type of normalization and then the common control, which is in this case the variety M82. and then OK. Now the heat map is recalculated. The M82 variety is displayed as a black row for all traits and the color scale is relative to it. So now black means M82 value, green is lower than M82 and red is higher. Next I'll go to the bars analysis and here I'll select another study. Here I have traits from multiple groups. The trait display button can be used to filter or sort the traits list. Let's say I want to focus only on morphology traits. I'll select them and click here. 
Now only morphology traits appear in the list. Like I did in the heat map analysis, I'll put the variety name in the X field. Then put all continuous traits, or ordinal, into the Y field. I can select all traits and only the continuous or ordinal ones that match the field's criteria will be moved into the field. Also, I can select one trait that is the most important to me to order the figure according to it. Let's pick this one, fruit weight. Then click OK. The figure shows all traits per variety as colored bars. On the right, there's a legend that shows the trait's colors. I can also point on each bar to see the corresponding variety and trait's name. Varieties are ordered according to fruit weight, which is the azure bar, as this is the trait I put in the order field. On the right, there are varieties with large fruit and it's decreasing as we scroll to the left. Here again, lines can be selected from the figure and saved in a dedicated list just as I showed before. Also, we can normalize all lines according to a common control. I'll click on this button. Then select the control. Let's say this is the one. Now all traits are normalized according to the control which appears as the baseline, and all other bars are normalized relative to it. Another feature is the filter option. When we click on the advanced filter button, a pop-up window shows up. Here we can define conditions to filter the results. For instance, let's select only lines with the highest yield. So for this, I'll select the trait total yield, this one, I can see that we have two yield traits measured, each of them in a different scale. I'll select the second one. Then I'll select the condition, let's pick this one, and then I'll put 10 to get only lines that are in the top 10% of yield. Add condition and then click here. The advanced filter icon is changed to indicate it is enabled and the status bar provides information about the trait that is being filtered. The resulting figure now shows only varieties that are in the top 10% of yield. If the legend interferes, we can remove it. Just check the include legend checkbox and here we have it. Pointing on a bar will nevertheless show its trait name in the tooltip. We can see that the bar that represents yield is indeed much higher than the average for these varieties. Finally, I can restore the normalization to the control that I performed before to make all bars relative to the selected variety. Yet another option is to switch between traits and varieties. And this is done by changing this checkbox. Now trait names appear below and colored bars represent varieties.